Hello everyone, and welcome to Let's Play Xenonauts, the beta demo with Frozen Foxy. I was actually approached recently by the designer of this game, Chris England, to, uh, to do a Let's Play of this and uh, help him get knowledge out there for this game. Apparently, someone over on the forums for Goldhawk Interactive, which is uh, the company that's working on making this game, uh, said that they really liked my channel and suggested that I should be one of the people who plays some of this game. Which is really cool, whoever did that, thank you. Um, this is uh, basically more or less XCOM. The, the original XCOM, except really updated. It's, it's not complete, obviously. There's lots of things that are lacking, but there's lots of things here that... Uh, exceed what XCOM had going for it. I really like what I've seen so far of this. I did test this out a little bit just to see how it played and uh, get a feel for it, but um, it's a pretty fun game. Now, you can't really change the resolution within the game, um, but you can do that outside of the game, so before you load it up, you can change what resolution you want if you're interested in changing to something else. Uh, inside the game, you can basically change the controls, which I'm not going to change any of these. I really like this little thing here that comes up like the clipboard for the game options. I think that's pretty nifty, and I just really wanted to show that off at the very least. But we're going to do a new game. This is probably going to be pretty short. Unless there is uh, some kind of demand for me to continue doing the demo. I don't know quite how far this goes into the game, or if it ends, or if it's just an infinite uh, loop of the game. But we will, we will at least give it uh, somewhere between 40 minutes and an hour uh, for this first time, and see what people say about it, see if they want to see some more of the demo going on, and whatnot. Um, obviously... I know that there's going to be a lot of people saying, we want to see XCOM back. XCOM will come back. My computer burned out, and that's why XCOM has been disappeared for a long time. But XCOM will come back. Don't you worry about that. I'm just working things out with that. It will happen. XCOM will come back. Everyone on that list who has been requesting to be on the team will be on the team. Not this team. Maybe if I do an actual Xenonauts Let's Play later on, I will put people on the team. But right now, I'm just going to keep the names that are uh, in this game, you know, whatever they come up as. But let's, let's go ahead and start a new game. I'm going to make this hard on myself. I'm going to go to Veteran, which is probably a bad idea. I played it on normal the first time that I, I tried this out, but um, it was too easy. I did not think it was hard enough. Maybe that's just me, but I did not think it was hard enough. I don't want to try insane because I'm sure that's going to get me killed really easily. Also, um, that turns on Iron Man mode, which basically means that I can't make a save at all. So some things might disappear when I exit the game and then it will look funky. I don't know how that works exactly because when I tried that on normal mode, it, uh, it erased one of the crashed alien ships that I uh, was going to go back to later on. And I didn't like that. That was kind of annoying because I couldn't tell that it was going to do that. Iron Man mode is supposedly going to save when you exit the game. I don't think it quite does that. I think it just saves at random intervals or something. Anyway, it, it might just be that it removes alien ships. That might be the only thing that uh, happens. But we're going to commence this operation, and we're going to go to the, uh, the geoscape in this game, which um, is a pretty good geoscape. My one complaint about this geoscape is that it is um, it's black in the ocean. It is really black in the ocean, and that makes it really hard to tell if it is uh, daytime or nighttime or whatever. 
I cannot tell whatsoever most of the time. There, there's just this faint movement of darkness going over the land, and I think if there was blue in the ocean, it would make it a lot easier to tell, but I can't really tell as it stands. Um, now, the cool thing about this geoscape, which is... Uh, is very different from the the geoscape that we see in XCOM is that you actually get to see a, uh, a radar uh, showing you where you're going to be detecting the alien activity so you could technically put your radar in a place that you're going to cover the most land um, the most different places and all that kind of stuff. You also get to uh, see which individual places are gonna be providing money for you which is pretty cool. So you can see exactly what you're going to be covering. Um, so probably somewhere right around here would be a very good location because you're going to be covering here, a little bit of down here, a lot of bit of up here, some of up here. It's, it's just like a great location because you would probably be covering all those different things. I'm not going to be over there. I'm going to be over here because those of you who have watched me for a while probably know that I am from Colorado. Yes, I am from Colorado. If you didn't know. So, we're going to uh we're going to put this down towards Colorado, which is right around here. Give or take. And um we are going to call it uh we're gonna call it Echo. No, no, no. You know what? We're gonna call it Alpha. I'm gonna give these like Alpha, Beta, and all that kind of stuff. So this is Alpha Base. Alpha Base is good to go, and we are uh, we're hitting most of uh, the United States and Canada here. Pretty good. Got some of Mexico there. We uh, we definitely do not cover anything else besides the United States and uh, Mexico. Apparently, we do not care about the rest of the world, at least not at the moment. I'm thinking about possibly uh, purchasing a new base immediately and just playing a little bit recklessly. But um, yeah, other than that, let's let's go ahead and look at the base. It is actually very, very similar to uh, the XCOM, eerily so. Um, we actually have smaller hangars though, so you can fit a lot more ships since they only take up uh, two spaces here. I'm kind of wondering if later on there might be a bigger aircraft and then you, you end up having to make a larger hangar for those big aircraft, but I don't know. I think that would be kind of a, a nifty upgrade uh, to have massive aircraft that would take up more slots over here. Um, we also have a, uh, a missile battery here, which is uh, basic defense, pretty cool. Um, we have living quarters, which takes up uh, two different spaces, just like our hangars do. So it's, uh, it's a rather large living quarter. Uh, gives us 50 different uh, slots for whatever we need. Um, we also have a garage here, so unlike XCOM, we actually have a place where we store our vehicles, uh, which is kind of neat because I think that means that if an alien attacks us, we might actually have the vehicle on base somewhere. I seem to recall in the original XCOM you never got to have your vehicles on base, but that might be because I never had my vehicles outside of my ship. So I can't be sure one way or another. We also have uh, two radar arrays here, one there and one there. So it's it's already t telling us that we can stack radar arrays. At least that's what I'm getting from this. Um, I don't know for sure if that is the truth or not because I haven't uh, I haven't really gotten into the meat of this game yet to to really know exactly how everything affects it, um, but I think I am correct on that because um, I seem to remember somewhere reading about that um, in the details of various things. Uh, 
But yeah, we can actually see our uh, short range detection percent uh, per minute, which is only 10%. So we don't really see many UFOs um, in our short range radar here. In our long range, we don't see anything really. We've got 1%, so it's, it's really, really low. Um, we also get to see um, how much research space we have available, our workshop space, so those uh, those are down here. We actually have a medical center. I'll get to that in a second. So here's our laboratory for doing research. Also takes up two spaces, so definitely not something you want to put on multiple bases because it's going to be taking up valuable space that you could be using for living quarters or something else to deploy soldiers. And we have uh, another two spaces for this workshop here. Um, from what I have seen so far, things that are researched early on in the game really don't need that many scientists allocated to it. It's, it's a very low number. Um, the medical center has uh, slots just like uh, your laboratory and your workshop. Uh, so that's that's for healing guys. I don't know if the healing system is implemented yet in this game because I noticed when a soldier that I had out on the battlefield got injured and I came back to base, it seemed like he was instantly healed even though it was talking about him needing four days to heal. So that might either be a bug or just not implemented. I'm not sure which. This actually has a, a bug report that you can use to uh, to go in there and say if there's something wrong with it uh, one way or another, which is, is a good feature because we can actually have a rapport with the people who are making this, and I really like that. And then um, obviously we have a storeroom this doesn't get used very much in the beginning of the game, and that's mainly because everything is infinite at the beginning of the game here. I think that's just because it's in uh, a beta phase here. But we do have uh, one thing that we can research right now under our uh, extraterrestrials here. I really like this that it's um, under different slots here because it makes it a lot easier to see what you want to research instead of that huge list that uh, we had in the original XCOM game. So we're going to go ahead and research this alien invasion. It doesn't have a description right now. I imagine they're going to add a description later, but um, at the moment there's no description. So anyways, that puts it up here and we can just allocate scientists like this. Um, unlike XCOM, if you keep clicking, it will not uh, recycle back to zero, uh, which I kind of like and kind of don't like at the same time. I would like it if it could uh, cycle around from uh, the highest number to the lowest, but I could see that getting kind of troublesome if you've got multiple projects going and then you're trying to allocate down to zero or up to the top on something and then it's allocated on other things you would have to you'd have to write some code to uh, to check all that stuff and it, it might get a little bit complicated but uh, right now we don't have anything uh, for our workshop to really be working on so our guys in the workshop are standing completely idle um, Here's a list of our personnel so far. Um, as you can see, we have some unassigned people and we also have some people on our Chinook. Now, the Chinook is basically a, a helicopter which ports your guys out uh, to the missions. It's, it's similar to the Sky Ranger from the original XCOM games. Um, it seems a little slower in my opinion than the Sky Ranger, but uh, it, is, it is more realistic for, uh, for a starting uh, ship. I thought the Sky Ranger was always a little bit too futuristic, and then every one of your people on your base was starting with really basic weapons and all that kind of stuff, and then we've got this really futuristic ship. Why do we have a futuristic ship and basic weapons? It it just doesn't measure out. The other thing that I really like about this um, is you're actually starting out with two different forms of armor. You've got basic armor and you've got the uh, jackal combat armor, which I think is really nice that they provided a little bit extra armor to uh, 
to basically show that these people are being provided for to combat this alien threat instead of oh let's let's just drop these people in here and they have nothing it, it seems like you should have at least had some kind of armor instead of walking around in uh, janitorial suits in the original XCOM I always found that kind of strange anyways uh, here's our stores which have absolutely nothing we we cannot purchase anything and we can't sell anything and the reason for that is everything's infinite everything is completely and utterly infinite right now um, I think this is probably going to change when the main game is released but don't quote me on that it is very possible that it may remain infinite like this just for the uh, the regular human weapons and then not be infinite for alien weapons or other things. Um, and we can also see the carry weight here and uh, our action points. You'll you'll notice that with the uh, the carry weight, it will start to turn red if you are at a weight that starts to uh, affect your action points. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull off this clip here. And this guy suddenly has his full action points. Maybe he's got a few less bullets, but he's going to come back to the base and be re-equipped anyway. I figure that he's going to be okay with 60 different rounds for his gun. Seems okay to me. Now these guys that we're looking at here um, are not on the ship. You'll notice that we only see four right now, and that is because we have the uh, the unassigned soldiers selected. So these guys don't really matter that much at the moment, so I'm not going to, uh, to really look at them. I'm going to actually switch over to the Chinook, and we're going to start looking at our guys over there. Now I don't like that this guy only has this basic armor. Honestly, if I am going out into a battlefield, I want people to have the best armor possible. Now that does make it so that he's he's a little bit overweight, so we're gonna we're gonna pull some stuff off of this guy. And we're just gonna switch things around here. Make things a little bit better. I actually do want that gun, please. We'll give him this sniper rifle. And we'll throw in a few more of these. Oh, nope, never mind. We will not throw in that. So he's got uh, 45 rounds of this, and he's got, uh, what, 36 rounds of pistol? I think he's good to go. He sounds like he's, uh, he's raring to kill some aliens. I'm good with him. Now this guy, another sniper here. I don't know if I really want this guy to be a sniper. He's also got uh, a good amount of uh, strength here. I think I'm going to uh, give this guy a little bit of a different layout than our first guy. I'm going to give him one of these. Give him some heavy machine gunnery. Awesome. Let's see how much we can put on him before he's overflowing with ammo. A little too much there. There we go. This guy's perfectly ready to go. Now, he probably wouldn't be able to equip this jackal armor and still be able to uh, to carry around that much ammo, if uh, any at all. Yeah, see, he's going to be overweight one way or another if I do that. So, I'm going to leave him in his basic armor, in his little skibby armor, which... Not the greatest thing in the world, but um, I want to have a heavy machine gunner. I think one more, yeah, makes it over. All right, got our next guy here, so we got a shotgunner. We'll keep at least two shotgunners, but he needs some ammo. All right, cool. Who's next? Another shotgunner. Oh, cannot do that much ammo with him. We've got this guy with a rocket launcher. I think I'll keep the rocket launcher for the moment. Now, the rockets are not shown right here. You actually have to uh, switch over to your equipment 
and uh, check out the rockets from that angle. So we've got uh, in incendiary rockets, we've got uh, these armor penetrating rockets, and we've got the regular uh, fragmentation rockets. I'm going to at least give this guy one of these, and can he carry this? No. Alright, so he's got three extra rockets here. He's got one pistol with 12 bullets. I don't think I can give him another clip. No, I can. I can give him a couple more clips. And that's enough. Alright, so he's got this pistol as backup if he ever runs out of uh, rockets. He's not going to have armor because this thing is heavy as all get out. But, um... I might, I might switch out the rocket launcher because I'm not really a big fan of explosives in these kind of games. They always seem to uh, get people killed instead of helping out, in my opinion. Give this guy some more ammo. Oh, that's a little overflowing there. Next dude. Give him some more ammo. Oop. Next guy. Even more ammo. Oh. And we are back to our sniper again. So we have basically uh, filled up all of our stuff. Now you can definitely look at the uh, breakdown of everything these guys can do. But I'm not going to pay too much attention to that. I'm going to, uh, to get right to the heart of the gameplay pretty quick here. Or at least try to. Now, with these, uh, with these tanks, or whatever you want to call them, um, we actually get to choose whether it's a rocket launcher or a uh, 50 caliber machine gun. I'm going to put a machine gun on this, and for this other one over here, I am actually going to uh, decommission it, because this actually costs money per month, and um, I don't want it. So we're going to get rid of that Hunter O2 and uh, just not have it any longer. Sounds good to me. Um, I'm not a big fan of vehicles. Honestly, I like having lots and lots of soldiers on the battlefield because soldiers can be upgraded. Vehicles can't. They don't get any sort of experience. They're just a vehicle. So, yeah. Once this vehicle gets destroyed, I'm not getting another one. So we can also check out our uh, different aircraft here. Um, and equip them with missiles and uh, cannons and so forth. And uh, obviously later on, I'm hoping that we're going to be getting uh, different kinds of aircraft. But right now we are stuck with these fighter jets, uh, F-17s. And we have one dropship, which is our uh, Chinook here. Uh, when we get to the battlefield, you will actually be able to see it more clearly. But this is a, uh, a large helicopter with uh, two different blades on it. So um, it, it looks like a normal helicopter that you would see in the military. So I, I really like the direction that they took with that. Anyways, let's head to the Geoscape and uh, hit up the timer. Make it go fast. Now the other thing that I don't like too much is um, once in a while on the Geoscape you'll see a message come up. Um, and the problem with that is it can go away if you're not paying close attention to it. And then you miss whatever it is. It's usually those messages down there are not very important. But it's kind of nice to see them so you can see the locations that things are happening. Anyways, we have finished the research on alien invasion. Uh, aliens have affected... Effectively, unlimited forces available. Alien craft are likely to increase in size and power as time passes. High-speed interceptor is available for research. So we can go over this uh, report here, but I'm not going to do that right now because that is going to take a lot of time. This summary is enough to, uh, to realize what's going on, and we've got high-speed interceptors now available for research. If you read this, you'll find out why those are available, but not right now. So let's go ahead and go back to our research. I really like that you can select the research tab straight from the, uh, the Geoscape. It makes it a lot easier when you uh, just want to research something instead of going to your base. Because you may not need to go to your base. Now this one, uh, much like 
the original XCOM has its own uh, UFOpedia. Of course, this is a, a Xenopedia. Um, it's not fully fleshed out from what I can tell. It has some pictures in here showing the uh, the different uh, the jet here and then we also have the uh, the helicopter. There's a better view of uh, what it looks like so you can tell what I was talking about earlier now. Um, some of these things do not have any pictures right now. I'm guessing either the artist is still working on it or there wasn't quite enough money just yet, so um, definitely go check out the Kickstarter, which I'm going to be linking for uh, each of these videos. Um, you can also find the demo there. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. I probably did, but uh, just to be sure, uh, you can find the demo, which is the same thing that I'm playing right now, and you can have some fun with it. Um, and then also we see some of these things don't have a description yet, but it is really looking like they are fleshing out this game pretty well. Now one thing I don't like about the early game is there doesn't seem to be much alien activity uh, early on in the game, so you really have to, uh, to punch it before you start seeing stuff. Now, did you see that message that just went by? Because I am going so fast um, with the time, I missed what that message was. I have no idea what that message was. I don't know if there's a way to pull up those messages again, but as far as I found out, I don't think there is. I think it would be nice if there was a way to just pull up uh, a list of all the messages that um, have been presented on the Geoscape, because then you would be able to... Uh, to basically read it off and look at the locations, all that kind of stuff, even if it was a month ago or something like that. I think that would be great. So one thing that I would like as a feature, make that either last longer, make that last until you click on it, um, or give it a message queue so that you can look back at the queue and figure out what's going on.